understand that the foundation for an ombre look is the money piece, which is almost solid blonde or very well blended by utilizing weaving and slicing technique, and the nape area, which is again almost solid by weaving, slicing back to back with the root shadow afterwards. That just gives you that depth in the root. So this is a foundation section for ombre. Sectioning for the money piece. You start in the front, just behind the hairline. No matter where your part is, in the middle or on the side, I find the middle part works the best. You take a triangle section, so you expose the big chunk of hair right underneath the hairline. And so this has to be foiled, starting with the weave at the hairline, and then just work your way up until you finish the whole section. So that hair is going to consist of your money piece, which is the make or the break of your balayage or that distinctive look. Once you complete one side, you move to the other side in the same manner. And after you finish the front, your money piece is already done. You move on to the back. You need to fill in all the nape connected with the front piece. Therefore, all your outer line of the hair is consistent and it's foiled. It should be the brightest part of the whole look. And now that we finished the most important three quarters of the work, whichever technique you decide, now we have to fill in the gaps and just do the top. This is nothing but a blending technique. Blend the top section with the bottom and the front. Well, all we need to do now is just get to work and do a simplest, easiest, fastest balayage technique. Something that I hope you can utilize in your salon behind the chair, something that's not gonna take you five hours. Something simple, simple enough to give you the most beautiful look, the most complete look with the least amount of stress. And so the money piece part, it's done. Now we can proceed with the nape area. So at the nape, I split it in two right down the middle, secure one side of the hair on that side. As you see the section here, just a little bit in a V shape, just for blending purposes, no other reason really. And so I'm gonna work on this half of the nape with the foils, with weaving, just like I did money piece, and that's giving you a bit more solid, more ombre look. On the other side, we're gonna do a weaving teasing technique. That's going to give you a little bit of a softer look that's gonna leave some of the natural hair in between the foils. So don't forget, connect those sections together. So I usually start diagonal back, Project the hair 90 degrees away from the scalp and weave right next to the scalp. And again, repetition, just like we did for the money piece. Place it perpendicular and parallel to the hairline. Stretch the hair, stretch it, don't pull it, just stretch it. Apply the product on the slightly stretched hair and then the foil is gonna be in place. I can twist and turn, but to a certain extent, <laughs> just so the uh, camera accesses the strand, I have to work behind the camera almost, but I'm just doing my best to show you guys, to let you see, even though, just keep in mind, it's just a basic weave, fold, fold, and secure. This is very important. And move on, keep doing it until you run out of that hair section. Half of the nape is done. As you see, just a few foils really fast. This is something that you do every day, just really basic weaving, minimal uh, hair left in between the foils. So this side is ombre and on this side now, we will make it in a TZ light foliage technique, which is gonna give you a sombre, a softer, more natural look. Okay, I've remixed formula. Gonna start again, structure equalizer spray. 
In a lot of cases, uh, I would wear gloves, but it's really hard for me to have control over the hair, the clip, and the foils at this time, so I'm opting out of gloves right now. But nevertheless, make sure that you're protected and you're safe at all times. Again, my first main concern is to connect these pieces, make sure. You can start diagonally or because it's just all blended and it's all off the scalp, you can actually start just horizontally. And let's just do that for a bit, horizontally. So what I'm gonna do is probably, the first section I'll just weave to have a really nice hairline. Just a natural weave, not bad, nothing bad. At this point, I'm going to refrain from uh, folding the foil. This is what I do in a salon. Everybody who wants this look very rarely has a short bob. Um, usually, everybody with long hair. So I'm gonna start doing a sandwich foil. So I'm gonna stick it to the top, bend the sides, and move on to the next uh, section. And I believe, guys, if you don't want to get fancy with this technique, this is the one that works, this technique works the best. The easiest, the safest, and especially if you're dealing with dark hair, this will give you maximum lift. So, that's a weave. And now we can do a really heavy weave. And back home, create a slight cushion at the root. Place the foil, you don't even need need to have a lip on the foil anymore and now you're blending going as close to the cushion that you created by backcombing as possible that will give you that blended on the root blended look and also a really nice diffusion between zone one zone two and zone three or the root mid shaft and ends and so you can do this horizontally. Just make sure that you're not going to have blotchy kind of effect on the hairline. All right, so you either weave and back home or back home and weave after. See which one you like best. Sometimes when the hair is a little bit too fluffy, you might want to place the foil and push it with your comb. Hold it there. So then it's those little hairs, they're hanging, they're not in the way. So you're not gonna get any spots, unwanted hair color in unpredictable places or unpredictable hair color in unwanted places. Either you foil, fold, or you go ahead and you sandwich and work your way up until you run out of hair. And so you see, even if you're using backcombing, you just make sure that your product is nicely blended towards the root here, so you don't have blotches of color. No matter how your technique, whatever technique you're using, make sure that you have a really nice application and very blended one. And so pretty much, we have one more section that that's gonna connect me to the side money piece. Back home. Again, place your hair on the foil and give it a little bit of back on back. Start in the mid and work your way up backwards to ensure less saturation and a very blended one. As long as you stretch the hair, you'll have control over it. And the section shouldn't be too thin because if you have too thin of a section, it's not going to stick on a foil. You're going to have to work more, more foils, and it's going to be a little bit more tedious. So, the nape is done too. One side back to back, almost back to back weaves. The other side is compact foiling uh, or sandwich foiling with back home and weave. Also solid slice, back combed and tinted. So, let's move on now to the top section. Before we do that, just want you to pay attention a little bit. On the ombre side, your detail is gonna be closer to the scalp. 
you might need to do a root shadow and be more consistent with it just to kind of blend in in case you have a little bit of a few spots or something that's not consistent. So that is going to be the closest to the scalp. This will absolutely have already a root shadow because of the back comb. So your detail is further away from the scalp. You can still do a root shadow. However, this, if you do it one step procedure, this should be perfectly fine with amazing blending just from get go. Now let's do the crown and everything that is on top of the sections from the nape. So occipital bone and up. As you see, I keep the same format from one point of origin. I just keep it in a diagonal uh, because it's easier for me to control to over direct strands of hair as I, as I see fit. Now I'm going to incorporate another technique that you can utilize or not um, by adding depth. Let's say you want to add some darkness throughout the hair just kind of to control a little. For that matter, I have a mixture of seven and eight colorants with thickener so I can control it, apply it with, a, uh, with a brush. And so I'm gonna keep the same format. I'm gonna go and weave quite strong weaving. Yes, back comb it a little bit. And I'm gonna unite them all on one foil. This is going to make it even further away from the scalp, always apply the darkest color first. At this point, if you're going to create depth, make sure that this formula, it's not really uh, darker than the roots because if it is, you're going to have a little bit of a brighter uh, root. So if this is darker than your regrowth or your natural hair, you just kind of tap it in right at the regrowth too. Just make sure that you create that depth so you get that root shadow at the same time as your balayage. So first goes the dark color because you don't want to apply pre-lightener on top um, of the color or you don't want to have the pre-lightener on the hair because the color brush is going to be contaminated and if any silk lip gets into the color then it will destroy the pigment and you're not going to have uh, a good formula. And then you go back and you apply in a W or Y pattern, right? In case that seven and eight color rounds or darker formula, encase it in a couple of strands, there are silk lift. And so this way, you're gonna get also depth at the same time as lightness. Let's do one more on the other side. So we've First, back home slightly, place the hair on a foil, make sure you back home a little bit, place your darker color, and you can do the middle, all dark color. And then do the silk lift on the remaining hair. So you're gonna have either wide blend or W, depending on how wide your section is. Make sure the blending is done right, so you, you don't end up with patches. section. If you're going to choose to do this technique where there's uh, two shades, one for depth and one for lightness, you will have a transitional shade in between. So if you're not concerned about that, by all means, go ahead and do it. If you don't want that, if you want the maximum contrast, no warmth whatsoever, I believe you should 
totally avoid the addition of a second color. Just do your TZ light or foliage, just like we did it in previous sections, and proceed after the processing with a root shadow that can be stretched in certain areas. That would be the best, cleanest application that you can do. So we're pretty much done except for the top section. And I stopped here because I want to show you how I deal with that top section. So that's your money piece, that's your point of origin from the sectioning. So you pretty much have only this top section that's remained. As you get closer to the crown, you have to do less and less blonde. So it will blend. The idea is to diffuse from very powerful, strong, pigment weight and strong blonde area at the nape and hairline to actually less on top because that's what gives it a lower maintenance. Now, as we know, blonde doesn't look as blonde unless it's compared to something darker. So therefore, in the front, on top of the money piece, this piece of hair should always be darker, less blonde, more brown, more natural. It's just for blending purposes only. And so, because her part is right here, and it will always stay here because it's a mannequin, I'm gonna work on her part. And therefore, I'm going to take that point right across, and I'm going to backcomb it, solid. Take that piece, the whole piece, and lighten it slightly. So it's away from the scalp because I, I just teased it, I back home it. Underneath the money piece, piece, it's right from the scalp. So that's going to start my drop zone in the hair from the money piece close to the scalp to the top section, which is going to be slightly different and darker. I'm not closing this foil because I want to keep a visual contact with it. Gonna take another thin piece of hair and I'm going to back comb it and drop it right on top, but color it to the same level as the one underneath. That's why I need to keep a visual contact here because all the hair, it's over directed, it all gets color at the same level. That's going to ensure that when the hair will spill over when it's in the natural projection, it's going to be that decrease and drop base at the top of the head. So um, second section also. Now third section, I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny weave and just leave it, not touching it. And I'm going to go with a third, fourth actually section, whichever your next section, whichever number that is, and do the same as I did to the previous section. Back home, drop it in the front, and color it to exactly the same level as the first and the second section. So you see how that's going to look when you actually take the foils out? It's gonna be the money piece first, close to the scalp, and then further, further, further away from the scalp as you go in the, in the technique. You don't have to go all the way. You can go about halfway through and then just blend it at the back with the remaining hair. Don't forget to leave some in between. Again, back home bit. So you take at least 40% of the hair bulk, bring it forward and color it right to the first line, to the first section. And that's going to make sure that your section, the color is going to look evenly throughout. Now we're cut to halfway on the crown. Now we can start work that from the back. And the back, you don't have to do it in the same manner. You can actually um, take an example, take a, a sample from the front and see where your level is. So. If you take a section of hair, bring it forward, you will know exactly where your drop zone is and kind of blend it accordingly. 
Now I always like to do less work at the back, especially on top. So I'll take that and know exactly where it is. So I'm gonna color it from here on, measure it. This is going to be the least amount of drawing you're gonna have. So I'm just insisting on the ends pretty much. Make sure you saturate. and leave some hair in between the sections and that's going to ensure the blending and the actual style of your sombre balayage, what have you. So this I'm going to weave and back home. So this is remain natural and so on and so forth. And that's that. This is done. And now, if you remember at the beginning of the technique, I was saying if you want solid ends, if you want to make sure that your ends are really as blonde as possible, take those sections that's in between the foils, gather them, just go in between your foils and kind of pull them on a side and just take them out with a projection of 90, 90 degrees, just to have control over all. Just back home them and lighten those ends. And that's only if you believe that you need more lightness than what you already created. Slightly, don't insist, make sure that you back home it really nice. Just fold it. And secure if you want. And that's going to give you more of a lift, lighter end impression. Any strand that you think is too thick, you take it individually, back home bed, and just kind of stay um, towards the ends. Don't go with your lifting too high. You want to create color weight on the ends, not on the roots. So this is just to cater for the ends only, not for the whole entire strand of hair. All right. Well, this is it. Key points, adding base in between. You know, it, it gets a little bit dirty, but nevertheless, you can create the depth at the same time. So I only did one section because uh, I want to compare it after when this mannequin is in food. Yeah, she doesn't look very pretty. She kind of looks messy right now, but the effect of it, it's really good. It's easy to do. You don't have to worry about balayage freeform, about all those stainings, orange, brassy, blorange hair. This way you know that if the base is right, your highlights are blonde, they're light enough, and the base and the highlight will, will blend seamlessly. And so that's the way I would do it in a salon on a busy day. Um, it shouldn't take you not even as long as it takes you to do a full head of highlights because this is more like a, a play. So good luck, hope you liked it. Let me know and I'll come back uh, when she's processed uh, to talk about how we can adjust detailing, toning, controlling if necessary. That's what she looks like pre-toning. So this is not toned, it's not finished, it's just blow dried because I wanted to show you first of all the blending of the money piece in the front on the side, you also have contrast, you have softness, and you have a gorgeous money piece. Now, on the other side, and you see the transition between the shades. So that was the over-directed section, and so you have darker top that's spilling over the money piece, and the money piece is hidden away, and so depending on how much you want to show, you can definitely see how strong that blonde is in the front. Underneath as well, on this side where we have the foils, you see a lot of blonde, the one that was weaved at the back. So again, this is not toned. The blending of the entire look, it's flawless. And let's take a look at where we had a base color underneath. So there was a section where we actually applied base at the root 
And so that's what that looks like. So you will see a little bit more depth, also a little bit of a transition in a warmer tone. Uh, nevertheless, it's not, not pretty. It's, it's very pretty. Uh, no staining, no blotching, nothing, but you can definitely tell the difference between the base where you tapped in the base and you add depth within the foil and the rest of the sections where you have none. So you can see the difference. The connections between the money piece and the back, you can tell the difference, like how solid almost this is and then how blended. Slowly, slowly goes into a more blend. And of course, this could be adjusted and detailed now with the root shadow in the right place. Of course, minimal around the face, around the hairline, because you want to uh, conserve that brightness around the face. So if you're gonna do a root shadow, you're gonna um, use, utilize the same sectioning as in the foiling. So you start with a very short root and then increase the root throughout the interior and the crown. So that's what she looks like before toning. And this doesn't need a lot of control. I think we're going to preserve the brightness, especially uh, the money piece. Uh, the rest of the hair is pretty good and blonde. It was processed for about 35 minutes. And that's what she looks like. Flawless blend. And this is a mannequin. Don't forget.